Hey guys, so I've got something else to show you. This is the NRF 24L01 chip. Uh, it's a wireless transceiver. Sorry, I've got the name wrong quite a few times already. It's a wireless transceiver and it works on the 2.4 gigahertz band. Works from 250 kilobits per second all the way up to 2, mega, <laughs> two megabits per second. Now, it's a nice little chip and I'm going to show you how to wire it up. There are a lot of tutorials available online, lots of people have done this already. Uh, but I didn't really understand all of them. Um, so I've sort of merged a lot of them together to figure out how to put this thing uh, with an Arduino or, or with whatever you like really. It's, uh, it works off SPI, hardware SPI pins and uh, a couple that are software defined. And there are loads of libraries out there as well which is really useful. Now this little chip is very cheap. I got two of these for about £3, which is pretty amazing considering what they're capable of. Uh, I got them off eBay, obviously, where I get a lot of things, uh, but I got them in the UK, so that was cheap for the UK. I mean, you can get 10 of them for around the same price from China, but uh, it's good to get stuff in the UK. They're small, they're lightweight, they've got an integrated antenna on board, which gives you up to a maximum of 100 metres range. My experience has been it's about 30 metres. Uh, I've gone down to the bottom of my building here and it still worked through quite a few walls but they're not very thick walls, they're not heavy concrete or anything like that, or reinforced concrete. So it's not, it's not really working very hard. They're better with line of sight, uh, and people's results vary really. Mine uh, don't work in the next room, but they work downstairs. It's, it's a bit weird. Uh, there's lots of, uh, sort of tutorials online that show you how to increase that range by changing the packet size and changing the data transfer rate. Some people have reported good uh, sort of distance with, with 250 kilobits per second and uh, an 8 byte package but mine are working very very well on uh, 2 megabits per second and uh, a 32 bit package. Now some people have reported some trouble with this with certain boards, uh, the Leonardo being one of them and I think it has more to do with patchy voltage regulation to be honest rather than the boards themselves not being compatible. Uh, a lot of people say that you need to put um, a little 10 NF capacitor across uh, VCC and ground on these but I'm just doing it on the board just to sort of smooth out any voltage spikes or anything like that that might cause issues uh, but in general they work on most Arduino boards any clones are fine too so I've had it working on a Leonardo, a Mega and on my DigiX at the moment and I haven't used a Nuno but everyone uses a Nuno so it's bound to work you could use this for uh, weather station monitoring, you could use it as a remote control for your car, or like a little robot rather, or you could use it for wireless telemetry. So you've got, say, uh, a car speeding around a track and you want to know the speed it's in, you want to know uh, the temperature of the engine, that kind of thing, the fuel level. You could use these things. Now, I don't know how well they work at speed when they're traveling, whether that has any effect on, um, on its transmission rate or, or the signal. Uh, but I think it's worth trying out, especially since they're only a few pounds. It has error correction built in, so you don't get garbage messages. You get either the full message or you get nothing at all, which is unhelpful when you're trying to figure out where, whether the signal strength is okay, but it's really helpful when you're trying to program correctly and you don't want any garbage coming in and reflecting in, uh, in, your, in your receiver program. Now I've got it hooked up to a DigiX and to a Mega and I'm just going to show you how they look now and I'll show you how you can wire up the chip as well. So you've got this little chip here and you've got all these pins on the back. Uh, you can see a close up now uh, and you can see they're not going to be breadboard friendly. They're right next to each other so you can't just plug that into a breadboard. You can put it onto perhaps a, a strip board, a Vera board and then break them out that way like I've done with some other ones. Uh, but I'm using uh, female to male jumper cables just to plug them into mine, which works very well, but if you wanted a permanent solution then you'd have to sort of cut some tracks or, or use Vera board or something like that. So um, I'm just going to draw out how these pins are mapped. It, it's got a bit of a weird pin mapping. So this is our... And this is NRF 24L01. I've started to learn it now. Uh, and we've got pins down the side here. Now, 
it's it's an odd pin mapping. It doesn't go down one row and then up the other. So it starts. It's like a zigzag. So this is one. This is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And those map to one is ground. Two is VCC, and that's five volts. Three is CE, four is uh, CSN, five is SCK or SCLK, six is, uh, is it Mozzie? Yeah, Mozzie, or Mosi, I don't know how you meant to say that. Seven is MISO or MISO and eight, which I'm not using, is the IRQ pin. So that's how it's mapped. So this is the top of your chip and then you've got the wiggly antenna there. Now, as I said, this works off SPI. So these are hardware pins. And, uh, and you don't need to change them, these ones here, these SEK, Mozzie, and MISO, or MISO. Uh, these are the two that you define, these two here, you define in software. And they can be almost any pins on your Arduino that you can use for I.O. So these ones have to go to your hardware SPI pins. Uh, if you're just using the standard library and you're not modifying anything at all. Now, there are two libraries that you can use. Uh, that I know of. I'm sure there are more. One library is uh, the MIRF library. M-I-R-F, I imagine, but MIRF the same. Uh, this is the one that you can find on uh, the Arduino kind of tutorial area, but there's also the RF24 library by Manicbug. Uh, this is the one that I'm using. It's a great little library. All you need to do is just define these two pins and then you can get started really. It's got, um, in fact, it's got a, a getting started tutorial on there, a little example when you download the library. And that's what I've modified for my little experiment. I'll show you the setup and then I'll explain some of the capabilities of these chips and some of the pitfalls. So this is it wired up to the DigiX. You see it just sort of sits on some headers on here. And uh, this is just the display I'm using to kick out the stuff. This is also SPI, but if you use a different chip select pin, then you're all right to use a few devices. Well, as many devices as you like, really. Um, at the moment, it's kicking out a voltage level from a uh, light-dependent resistor. And it's also uh, reading a switch as well. And this is coming from the Mega. So if I press the switch, it changes, and you see that the, the light comes on. And if I cover up the LDR, you'll see that the voltage changes. Now any delay that's caused in this display is not, not only coming from writing the display, but also the DigiX receiving a message from the Mega and then sending a message back to say that it's received it. So it's essentially echoing what it, what it gets. Now it's all very well me showing you this on, uh, on the DigiX because it just plugs straight into the board, but let me show you what on the Mega so that you can see how a lot of you will have to connect this up. So here it is connected to the Mega, uh, and that's sending the data over to the DigiX. I realize they're very close, it's not a very real world application. Uh, however, it's here, just here. Uh, you'll see one spare pin at the bottom there, that's the IRQ pin. And I'm just using female to male uh, jumper cables, and they're going into the hardware SPI pins, which are just down here on the, uh, on the Mega, but on the Uno there along the top. I think they're 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I think. Uh, but you can also use this small header on the top here. Uh, again, I'm powering it with 3.3 uh, volts and it's got 5 volt tolerant uh, input output, so it's okay to come from those. Uh, I've also specified the CE and CSN pins down here too. And I've got a little capacitor here, I say it's little, I think that's 100 UF, uh, and that's, uh, that's just clearing out any kind of voltage spikes going across uh, ground and VCC. It's not as close as I'd quite like it to be, but 
a lot of people prefer to solder them directly onto here. Right, I think that's just about enough from me. I'll put my code in, uh, in the description thing so that you can take a look at it. Uh, but I'm really just running a getting started example with a few modifications so that I can send uh, strings and so that I can send uh, it's like separate data, it's like a float. Uh, but you can take a look at that and if you need any help, please ask. I don't know an awful lot about these modules yet. I've not used it in any kind of um, real world application. It's only for testing at the moment. But hopefully that might have solved some of your issues in getting it started. Again, uh, sometimes you'll find that these chips don't work very well. Uh, they're very pa people have very patchy results. Mine work best at two megabits per second uh, and they don't work at lower settings, unfortunately. I don't know why. Uh, I've tried to find an explanation, but I can't. Uh, so if anyone knows the reason why that would be the case, then please tell me. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope it's been helpful. I certainly think that some of the points I've raised will help some of you because they're not raised everywhere. You sort of have to gather all this information from the internet to get it. Uh, especially the pinout, which isn't all that clear. Some of these modules actually have it printed on, which is useful, but most of them don't, especially not the cheap ones. Uh, and the fact that mine doesn't work at lower data rates is quite infuriating, but it doesn't matter that as long as it works at two megabits per second, it's fine. All right, thanks a lot.